At Marco, so as folks probably know, but we're you know a platform to help companies connect their people um, through events, specifically team travel, on-sites, off-sites, retreats, gatherings. We make it kind of more cost efficient, save time, and hope to kind of increase the the effectiveness of these gatherings. But like, there's a question around: Do you you know these are not small investments? The same way real estate isn't a small investment. So that's something that you have to totally acknowledge. Uh, and think through as an organization uh, in terms of your kind of spend and, and budgeting and so forth. Um, the question is, do in-person events actually work? And how do you measure the ROI of investing in gatherings? Uh, and when you get together, how do you make the most of, of that time? Brian, I'll, I'll pick it. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a first stab at this one. Uh, the, the great part is there's evidence out there. So Atlassian uh, published a study, there are a thousand days of distributed work uh, back in December. Uh, it's easy to find online. It's It's really good work. And one of the things that they showed was the impact of the gatherings that they do. So 1,600 gatherings roughly over the course of several years where they measured um, what was the what happened to employee engagement um, post a gathering. And what they saw was that you would get a about a 28% boost in employee engagement post a team event. That engagement would persist and not come back to flat essentially until four to five months later. Um, and it was even higher uh, for two groups in particular, uh, new hires and new grads, not surprisingly, right? They're the ones that need it the most and, and therefore feel it the most. So, um, and they also measured this against random in-office uh, encounters and found that the random in-office stuff didn't do anything to move the needle. It was the, the time together with your team that did. Uh, there's also a study by Raj Chowdhury out of Harvard Business School that's done the same thing with Zapier, where it lasted for three to four months afterwards. Um, and there's also plenty of studies out there that link, you know, employee engagement back to productivity measures and, and to outcomes. So it's not, you know, it, it's a different set and mix of how you have to look at the cost profile. Um, a lot of organizations treated the office as sort of a fixed expenditure because in the short term, if you'd signed a 10 year lease, it kind of was, you're sort of stuck. And the sublet market in commercial real estate has bluntly stank. Um, but if you're thinking about this in terms of the trade-offs, it's not just about let's shrink the office real estate. It's let's shrink the real estate. Let's put, though, a substantial part of that back into what's more effective, which is A, redesign what you've got left because bluntly office space that's 70% dedicated to heads down open office floor plans is not what people need these days. And B, put the money into supporting events and gatherings. Um, I've got a piece that I'm going to publish probably next week that talks more about this from a couple of other companies like Allstate and Zillow and the practices that they've got out there. But companies are really seeing ROI in terms of employee engagement in particular, um, and obviously things like decreased um, uh, uh, turnover, uh, other issues. Excellent. Love to hear, like, Chrissy, what are you seeing? But also, like, Suman, you deal with this on a day-in, day-out day out basis. How do you guys approach it? I mean, I think the only thing I would add there is I love this idea of looking already at your employee engagement surveys, right? Like, you're already tracking a lot of this data. What is the relationship between feeling connected and retention and uh, engagement with your employees, right? And so knowing what are your baselines here and then being able to track, okay, well, when we do get together, what is what is the impact on that? Do you see a boost? Um, and the other piece I would say is, is getting really um, good about collecting qual data also after you get together, right? Um, you know, we all love numbers, but also people have an experience together. And if you can understand what the impact of that experience is on the individuals and on their feelings of belonging with a team, that's really important. Um, and so being just good about actually getting those surveys out to people after they gather, it's a super simple step that you can take. Uh, and it could be one question, what was most impactful? What would you do differently? And just start to build a practice of doing that so that you can continue to improve these over time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, awesome answers. I think my point of view is that, uh, I guess y'all both live in, well, San, have lived in San Francisco, I think, but Seattle for, for Chrissy. But when I was in San Francisco uh, working in, in tech and the startups, every startup, and I think Scoop, which uh, I, with uh, which you're an advisor of, uh, Brian, I think I moved their office like three or four times. But when you, when you raise money for a company, 
you would just like go get this fancy office. So it was like part of like the Silicon Valley kind of bright passage. And then companies, obviously corporate real estate is, a, is one of the biggest markets in the world, right? Um, now there's a shift where companies are spending, in some cases, nothing on real estate, but more, more realistically, they're reducing their real estate spend. And I guess my point of view is you can't get away with the best of both worlds in terms of not spending on employee connection. That's simply zero, not. Zero is not a good answer. Yeah. And I was talking to a head of people of the Series B, you know, fast growth, well-funded startup, and they've never gotten together, nor do they have real estate. And my view is there isn't a single example historically of a kind of generational or like just like large durable company. Even think about like the OGs, like, a, you know, a MailChimp or GitLab, right? Which I know, you know, Darren over at GitLab, they have whole playbooks around how to do gatherings, right? So, so it wasn't ever as if people got away with nothing. And the other point is, I think people should be super thoughtful about kind of the amount of money they're spending. A lot of companies don't budget for it. They don't even know how much a single event would cost, right? Which is, you know, we're very happy to help kind of educate and do things in the most cost efficient way. So my view is you should have a strategy based on data. The Atlassian research is amazing. And also you think about Annie Dean, who kind of leads that team. My, my understanding is, uh, is that she also oversees their real estate spend, right? Mm -hmm. So, so now you're kind of thinking about two buckets of spend that are essentially both with the same objective, which is why do you have an office in the first place to connect people, right? So kind of like my view is there should be, there will be more sophistication with regards to what are the formats people getting together? Is it full company? Is it leadership team level? Is it functional team level? Is it, what are those formats and permutations? How the frequency, how much does that cost? You need to have a way to budget for that. And to make, you need to want, you are going to want to save money as much as possible. And to the last part of the question, it should be super intentional, right? If you're going, no one's going to advocate for spending money on a, a boondoggle, <laughs> right? Necessarily, like to your point, Brian, just focusing purely on the social component of it. I think there is a lot of um, more kind of intentionality around like, what are you trying to achieve? Is it collaboration? Is it trust building? Is it like doing a design sprint, right? Is it a hackathon? Is it a sales kickoff? And, and then now the challenge is as a team leader, you might have a new role to be an experience designer, almost a facilitator, which is why kind of, I think we are excited to work with companies to think through that. But I guess the short answer is you should think about the ROI, but think about holistically your investment. Yeah. And for most companies, by the way, it's going to be an, end up being a net cost savings versus what they've been putting into fixed real estate. Um, I mean, somebody shared this with me the other day, their, their average cost per employee of real estate was $11,000 per year. So mm -hmm. if you can cut half that back, it's pretty easy to afford to on a 10,000 person organization to hire three or four people to orchestrate events who are actually professionals. Cause that's what Chrissy does in this is actually hard to do. That's the other thing I think we don't recognize. I was sitting in a um, group of 16 senior leaders uh, down in Atlanta of a, at corporate headquarters. We were talking about this stuff in terms of the importance of getting your team together and almost to a person, um, they're all like, but what do I do? Mm -hmm. because yeah. they're very used to the they're used to the corporate powerpoint version right they're used to we go into a uh, into a conference room or we go grab a hotel someplace for an offsite and we powerpoint ourselves to death uh, for the vast majority of a day so it's it's training them for those other skills to get deeper and, and richer in terms of understanding one another and even just meals together and volunteer activities can scratch a lot of itches but net net, like Atlassian has said, this is a, a cost savings. Zillow has said this is a cost savings. It, Allstate, it's a cost savings. You've gotten rid of, you know, half the the office space. Uh, you've redesigned parts of it, and you've put a, a portion of that money, but not all of it, back into um, supporting teams through not just funding, but you know, literally giving them the support infrastructure for like how do you build a good agenda? What are the types of activities you should be doing? Yeah. yeah, I mean, one of the, the things that we've done at Slack that I love around this is just creating community around it, right? So um, we have an on-site channel. And then after somebody, like after an organizer does an on-site, they get a quick little survey that says, hey, what did you guys do? Where was it? Uh, what are some activities that you'd recommend? Uh, what maybe fell flat? Uh, so how do you create conversation and community around how to do this? You know, we've always if you think back sort of in the pre-world, uh, executive retreats are people that you would bring in coaches to run, right? And facilita professional facilitators, but now we're needing to do that for this water swath of employees. And so how do we create 
uh, the resources that people need to run these things effectively uh, at scale, right? Yeah, you know, it's it's so funny because this is what, obviously what we think about day in and, and day out. And we say that there's like, you know, two large components for what we do at Marco. One is like, you know, basically like group travel event management, finding a hotel, booking vendors and dinners and that sort of thing. Um, and the second is itinerary design and experience design, which is so funny because you might be the most talented engineering leader ever, but you maybe haven't, you maybe haven't read The Art of Gathering by Peter Parker and <laughs> of intentionality around like, how do I like set an intention and, and, and kind of like, and so we have this platform that'll launch soon around like itinerary building where you can drag and drop these sessions. We'll recommend what to do, but you almost want to make, you, we have to make it a platform so it's accessible to any team versus you have this blank page problem around like, how the heck do I do this, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, blank pages are really hard for people yeah. who aren't used to dealing with that set of topics and issues. Thank you.